Hello everybody. So in this part of the video, we are going to understand the actual ray diagram method and we are going to obtain all the images. So first of all, I'm going to keep the same object over here at a distance of three centimeters away from this mirror M1 and four centimeters away from this mirror M2. So located over here. Now this is our object. This object O is at a distance of three centimeter from here and four centimeter from here. Now we would be pulling out two rays. These two are the incident rays coming out from the object O falling on mirror M1. Now the image is formed three centimeters behind and how do we know? So this is the reflected ray and now this is the angle of incidence at the same angle the ray would be reflected and I must pull this and this reflected ray backwards to get an image. So I know that the image would be formed three centimeters behind and this would be my reflected ray like this. This is my image I1. So actually I don't wish to use the protractor over here. So what I have done is I have placed the image uh, behind the mirror first and then I have extended the reflected rays. Ideally these two reflected rays when extended backwards we get the image. But I don't want to use the protractor so I did this way. Now in the same way there is one another ray which falls like this. Third incident ray, incident ray number one, incident ray number two, incident ray number three. Now it will also be reflected in this direction such a way that this is the point of incidence like this. So this is our reflected ray and these two angles will be of course equal. Now let me give the name as this is say ray number one, this is ray number two. Now for this mirror M1, this is my incident ray because it is falling from the object. This is our object O. And this is our reflected ray for this mirror. But if you notice very carefully that this ray is not going to vanish from here. It is going to strike the mirror and it is going to hit the mirror somewhere over here like this. So this is the point of incidence. Now this is the incident ray for this mirror M2. So for mirror M2, ray number 2 which was the reflected ray for M1 is now incident ray for M2. Now this incident ray always comes out from the object. Now over here if you look carefully then this incident ray appears to be coming from I1. So that's why this behaves as an object for M2 because this incident ray appears to be coming from I1. Under that situation you can extend the mirror well like this. Now since this is the object, its image would be formed somewhere over here. So I should measure this distance. This is four centimeters. So at four centimeters behind, I should get my image here. And that I am going to call as I1 star. Now this is the object. This is the incident ray. This is the image. And this should be a reflected ray. Because if you extend the reflected ray backwards, you should get the image. But I have a habit of drawing image first because I don't use the protector. And of course, you can draw normal as the angle bisector. So this is the object for mirror M2. This is the incident ray. This is the reflected ray. And if you extend reflected ray, you get the image same distance behind. This is four centimeters. This is again four centimeters. Right. Now in the same way, there are another rays which are going to fall from the object directly like this ray, this ray and this ray. There are three rays which are going to come from the object directly strike the mirror M2. Now I know that the image will be formed four centimeters behind. So from here it would be one two three and four so here would be the image 
I2 and all these rays would be reflected like this because all the refracted rays when I extend them backwards I should get the image and this ray would be going in this way and this ray we have to be very careful over here that this ray would be bouncing like this let me give the name as a b now you can see very clearly that a is the incident ray for mirror m2 b is the ref reflected ray for mirror m2 but b is the incident ray for mirror m1 because this ray is striking the mirror over here and this ray appears to be coming from i2 so this behaves as the object for mirror m1 you can see that this is our incident ray appears to be coming from i2 so this behaves as an object now under that situation i can extend this mirror behind like this this is the object this is the mirror so image must be formed behind the mirror at the same distance this distance is approximately 3 cm so 3 cm behind I am going to get my image I2 star which is coinciding with I1 star like this so for this mirror M1 this is the incident ray which appears to be coming from I2 so I2 is the object now for this mirror M1 this is I2 star which is going to behave as the image now where is the reflected ray I should combine these two points the C is the reflected ray and if I wish to draw the normal of course perpendicular to the mirror and the angle Y sector like this now what we need to understand is this is known as primary image this these two images are known as secondary images this is again primary image so what is primary image so you can see that these all rays they strike this mirror once so one time reflection happens and we are extending the reflected ray backwards and this is the image form so any image which is formed due to one time single time reflection are known as primary images whereas you can see these images they are formed due to the second time reflection this is one time reflection here second time reflection over here and you are extending it backwards so this is how it goes i suggest everybody to practice this two to three times to gain a better understanding thank you